Welcome to the podcast, Giving Back is Dead. We're here today with Sebastian Montabunel, the CEO of The Island. Welcome, Sebastian. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to talk to you today. We're talking to Sebastian because The Island has very generously agreed to sponsor the next set of conversations that Giving Back is Dead is having at Offscreen the event in Paris, the week of the Paris Art Week. So thank you very much, Sebastian, for agreeing to sponsor our talks. You're very welcome. And it's a good thing to sponsor, I have to say. We love content at the island and your content is exceptional. So very much a pleasure to oblige. <laughs> we, very, we appreciate you saying that. So I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the island. I, first, can you tell us what is the island, Sebastian? Uh, so we it's an idea that we had with my uh, business partner so we are co-founder and uh, we created it last year in 2022 and the idea was that the island will commission or finance uh, artworks that have a strong digitally uh, base so it could be on chain or off chain uh, have a strong AI element or data elements, and that's that's what we do. So that, that was the first part of the island. And the other things that was really important for us is was how uh, we're going to engage the tech and art community together and create some bridges and, and bring them to, together to make sure that the tech community will uh, be part of the art world very soon, much more front stage than they are now and also we wanted to shape the funding and the collect uh, the way museums gonna collect in the future so so really that's the three missions of the island okay and the, so and who exactly is your audience uh, that's the thing we're still looking for <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, uh on uh the, the audience, it's really the art world and, and the tech. So all these people, you know, in 2022, you had a, a big web-free community for the first time that came and they start saying that they wanted to collect things that from the art world, from the inside of the art world, we thought that will never come. We thought they were not, uh, they, they were not engaged with art and they came from an angle that was totally obscure from the art world. And they came from the idea of uh, generative art, something that was more or less dismissed from the traditional uh, art world. And suddenly that was, that was amazing. We say, okay, this is a great community. They like brainy stuff and we can uh, engage at a higher level than uh, red painting on the wall. And uh, so we were, we were really excited about that. So the first idea was basically the audience was the tech world. And then if I understand correctly, you decided to create the link with the more traditional art world uh, inter intermediaries. Uh, absolutely, because me, my background is traditional art world. The background yeah. of my uh, business partner, it's finance and he's a total tech geek. So he's been uh, investing a lot in, uh, in tech, anything to do with uh, web free AI, anything you can think of. And that's when he asked me if we could create this project where we'll create bridges between the two worlds and help them to convert this web-free native people into art collectors. So, so that was the idea at the beginning. And that's, that's how we created the island. And as you know, the focus of Giving Back is Dead is looking at the evolving world of giving to the arts, mostly from the next generation. So am I correct in thinking that your tech audience is mostly next generation people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're extremely young, uh, which was a, a breath of fresh air, I have to say. Uh, the traditional art world seems to get older and older, me including, <laughs> and, and, and suddenly we engage with, uh, with a tech community. Uh, they were between 20 and 40 years old, with a majority of them being 30 years old and having, uh, for some of them, huge amount of uh, cash disposable uh, to spend in art project or acquire or collect, whatever you, you want to call it. And, and that was, super super interesting they're extremely curious they are super bright people 
and the amount of uh, ground that you can cover in a short amount of time is pretty phenomenal. So basically, the, essentially, they are millennials and Generation X, Generation Z, millennials and Generation Z, who you're talking to. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, so, so that's why they, they see me as a dinosaur. <laughs> so I don't know which generation I am, but <laughs> probably uh, very old. But, but you're able to establish a dialogue with them and they appreciate it. Is that the case? Absolutely. I mean, they're extremely curious. Um, first, they have a lot of questions and basic questions. And uh, actually, it's quite good because sometimes we forget where we are and offer and how disconnected we are from, you know, from, from people who we are not uh, used to, to the art world. Uh, and you engage, but also they do a lot of uh, personal homework. So, so from one week to another, you don't have a feeling that you have to repeat what you've said the previous week, but you're already uh, to the next step. So, so that's, that's extremely interesting, the way they absorb information their need for learning and to understand. I think for them, for people from the tech community, they, they want to understand, but they don't want to understand 10%. They want to understand 150%. So I don't know if it's a characteristic from the Gen Z uh, generation or if it's from the tech community, but I have to say it's really, it's a pleasure to, to communicate with them. And is the audience global or is it concentrated in any particular part of the world? Well, we, we'd like to think more as a PR tool that it's global, but really, it's really Western, at least for the one that I have engaged with. It's mainly Europe and America, uh, to be fair. Sometimes there's a bit of a Latin America. Uh, Middle East, they like to talk, but I'm not sure they are engaging so much at the moment. And Asia, to be fair, it's, it's too far for us, except one museum. But that's a traditional art museum, but otherwise we we don't really have any access there yet. So, Sebastian, you know, you're working in a similar areas of uh, strategic consulting as I am. And when I'm working on new projects with um, clients, I always ask them, what do they consider as success? That is, what would you consider success one year from now and five years to now? And how would you measure that you've actually achieved it? Well, for me, as you know, uh, outside uh, the island, I've got uh, different activities uh, with, with the art world. And, and one thing that is really important for me is the well-being of the art ecosystem. And uh, last time I had a very interesting uh, discussion with one of the biggest German galleries. Uh, they, they, they've, been there, they've been around for a long time. And, and I was talking with them and I said, what's the average age of your collector? And he said, well, I haven't done deep study in, into it, but we are probably into the 70 years old, you know, uh, average. I say, oh, wow. And I say, out of your customer that have passed away, how many in percentage do you think um, the, the next generation, so their children or grandchildren uh, kept working on the collection and keep buying instead of calling uh, Sotheby's and Chris's and getting rid of the entire collection. And it's a roughly 10 or 15%, which means that at that rate, if there's no new uh, fresh blood, it's going to be extremely difficult to keep a very healthy ecosystem or, or something that looks the same as we, we've been knowing it for the last 20 years. Uh, and we know that art, it's, it's expensive, so it's directly linked to wealth. And in the last 10, 15 years, the biggest producer of wealth tend to come from the tech community. And the tech community haven't been really engaging with arts, like big galleries like Gagosian, Pace, and a few others have been trying open um, galleries in uh, San Francisco, in LA, employing the wife of the biggest VC, you know, in the, uh, in the tech community and no success whatsoever. Uh, and that's why we're doing the island and we are talking to this to this community. There is a big uh, idea of transferring knowledge. That's why we have a research department inside the island. We are publishing research reports in their language 
They are, and uh, it's very successful, actually. We have a very good uh, positive feedback. And the idea is in two or three years to have, we, we know that not the whole web free uh, community is going to move to the art world, but if we have a few persons that moves and uh, start collecting, uh, I will consider it uh, this as a success. Why did you decide to call it the island? Why the island? Uh, uh, the island, it's in contemporary art, as you know, it, it, it's a big, uh, big theme. It, it's two or maybe three, but the island is a big one. Pantries is the island. <laughs> but uh, it's a, another recurring theme into the contemporary art. But the island is this idea that it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's an untouched virgin, and it can be shaped. It's almost like this utopian idea that it can be shaped from the ground, and we are free from the outside world. So, so that's why we called it uh, the island. And in terms of uh, identity and helping people to project, you always uh, give uh, very positive uh, thoughts. So, so that's why we called it the island. <laughs> okay. um, why don't you, I th could you talk a little bit about this first um, commissioned uh, on-chain work of art? Talk a little, a little about, what, about the artist, why you chose it, and what it is. Yeah, so so for the first commission, we wanted to see how uh, an established artist will use on chain for for their practice and what it will bring and and uh, see how they would work with it. So actually, that was quite difficult to find an artist because artists tend to enjoy working. Uh, to think of an idea, think about it for, for a week, for a year, for 10 years, and giving you a, a finished product. Where when you start working with, uh, uh, with uh, on-chain, this is not really what we were after. We wanted a dynamic idea and use AI. So at the end, we, we start talking with Stefan Brueggemann. So Stefan Brueggemann is is just under 50 years old. He's with Ausenworth, one of the largest gallery out there. He's very established, and he comes from the conceptual art world and arts and language. Uh, and then we start uh, looking at one of his most famous series, what he's known for, Headline and Last Line in the Movie, and see how it will evolve uh, on chain. And, uh, and it was fantastic because he, he was able to put his head uh, to the project like straight away, uh, all that uh, problem of working with a set of uh, rules and characteristic was totally uh, logical to, to to his body of work. So, so yeah, so that's why we picked him. Um, and then, uh, so we, we, we read on the headline and last line, but on chain. So just to be, it's 60 works. So it's three series of 20. Uh, with three different backgrounds, so that's why you're serious. So one is on gold leaf, another one is on gray marble, another one is on pig uh, marble. And all of them have a quote from a particularly iconic English-speaking films that are written by Stefan in his uh, artistic language, which is like a graffiti style uh, yeah, um, visuals. Uh, and then after, the, with the technology, we were able to plug to five different types of source via RSS feeds. And then we have trained an AI to start thinking and impersonate uh, Stefan Brueggemann to use his language and uh, calligraphic flair. And on, uh, on a few different topics, which are politics, finance, tech, and international news. And all of this is, it's balanced. It's not politically charged. It's it, it just properly uh, balanced. But, so basically we have replaced Stefan by the AI, by training an AI. So, so yeah. And then after every day, you have three headlines uh, coming up. And you as a viewer, you, are, you, you have to engage with the work and you can select what the final work should be when you think it's the right time to freeze it for different reasons because you think it's aesthetically pleasing, you, you think it's important, 
In, and, and what does that mean important? It depends to you. It could be because that's the day you got married or you got children or because politically or internationally there is some news that are worth it to be kept. Um, I don't know if I explained very well, Scott, but that's, <laughs> that's the idea. That's right, uh, and that work is blocked on chain. And after, if you want, you can you can commission it as a physical piece uh, directly from the artist. I think it's an incredibly exciting initiative. I don't. It, I don't think there's has anything been done like this. No, it's nothing. Uh, you know, usually NFT basically it's final work that's been minted almost as a JPEG. In dynamic NFT, very little. But this one, we have built the algorithm AI, so it's a generative work that is constantly uh, working and where also you have participative element of it. So as far as we know, it's the, it's the only project of that size uh, that's been launched so far. Well, I can't wait to see it. Is it possible to see it? I know you are going to, at, at off screen, our event in Paris during the Paris Art Week, I believe you're going to be showing some of the work but will we be able to understand it when you show it? Well, uh, that, that's the aim, let's say. <laughs> you will definitely see him, uh, see the works. Uh, we will do a beautiful installation during off screen. We are super excited to have been invited by uh, you and Julian. And, uh, and I hope that people will uh, understand it. But I think it's pretty, it's pretty clear that we might have to explain what's the engine and how it works. But it's visually uh, striking, and and uh, yeah, I think uh, people should engage with it. At least I hope so. <laughs> well, thank thank you very much, Sebastian, for coming and talking to us today. And I am I also would like in the future that we continue these talks. We have lots of other topics that we can talk about, and I hope we have a chance in the future to continue discussion on different topics. And I look forward to seeing you in Paris and discovering this incredible work. Thank you, Scott. And I'm also looking forward to see you in Paris <laughs> and, and to see if you understand the work. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Be sure to check out our latest podcast and subscribe to Giving Back is Dead.